tonight against Newcastle. Mo Salah, the star of the show with two of them. And I'm delighted to say he joins us live right now. Congratulations, Mo. Just a sensational performance and an incredible second half of football all round. What was it like to play in that game? Uh, thank you. Uh, well, it's a great, great result for us. You know, the, the game was very intense and uh, the best thing that we managed to, to, to get the three points. Now we are top of the table and yeah, we just need to carry on and uh, try to win every game. How hard was it to stay calm when certainly in that first half, the, ch the chances kept coming and kept coming, but you weren't able to take any of them? Well, we, I think uh, the, the, the players spoke in the dressing room. We have to we have to stay calm, we just have to play our football and we missed a lot of chances anyway, I missed the pen and we just like, in half time I was like, okay, are you going to leave to the national team with that performance? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> so I had to like really focus and just step up and try to, to make it different and um, I managed to did, so I managed to do so, yeah. Was there any, ever any chance, Mo, that you weren't going to take the second penalty after not scoring the first one? No, no, I think, uh, <laughs> no, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm calm, I'm trying to do my job and um, I, I always practice. Um, the, first, the first one I was confused in a way that I saw the, the goalkeeper coach from outside, to, uh, he's waving for him in one side, then I was like, oh, okay, sh let's go in the middle, then uh, he, he managed to save it very well. And then the second, the second one I was just like, okay, this is what I did in training, I just carry on, do my, uh, my, my thing. Mo, I noticed in the second half you changed your boots. Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. The, the, the other one, the one I missed the pin with, uh, was like, I just trained with it yesterday. It's, it's kind of not superstitious, but because I play with many boots. But um, yeah, when I feel like it's going to play in my head, like, okay, out, change the boots. <laughs> So, so he never missed the penalty. It was the boots fault. <laughs> nah, not really. But like, I don't like to have that going to the second half of this one. I didn't score with it yet. So, no, just change, make my mind calm, and just focus in the game. Mo, Liverpool top of the league right now. A long way to go. You've won the title a few years ago, and that team was built and won a Champions League, and then won the Premier League. This team is almost like a new team. I mean, how much belief is there that you can really mount a challenge and maybe go on and do something special this season? Uh, I think we, we believe too much. We have like, such a good talent. Uh, they just need to work hard. Nothing else. They just need to, to express them, themselves in the field. They just play their football. And uh, if they manage to do that and with working hard, as I see in the guys working at gym, after training, practice a lot. So, and in a the game, they just show up like today. Uh, that's what makes us winning. Mo, you're now le leaving uh, Liverpool for the African Nations Cup. I mean, as a Liverpool supporter watching tonight, I mean, how strong is your group and how quick are you going to be coming back? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think everybody's telling me the same, but, um, you know, I, I want to win this competition. I, I would love to win it. Um, and I'm sure, like, without me, I'm sure that the players will manage to, to win the games. We have a fantastic players, uh, really good quality, and uh, they just need to, to leave the pressure away, just play their football. I just, I think... Uh, we have like anyone can play in my position, anyone can do what I'm doing and just the system is good and everybody just needs to feel, to feel free to, to express himself. Yeah, I think there is a bit of nervousness, Mo, about, amongst Liverpool fans about your, your absence and how long that means, how many games you might miss. But can you explain to us the other side of the story and just really what it means to you to go and play in this tournament and play for your country? Of course, it means a lot to play with the national team. You can ask Karaga, you can ask anyone, like, play for the national team. Like, it's a great feeling. Every time you step in the field with a national team jersey, it's like uh, it's nothing, I, something I cannot take it for granted. And I'm just happy to, to be there, happy to play in a tournament, and I would love to win it. Mo, I can assure you, Karaga didn't feel the same way about England as he did uh, Liverpool. <laughs> but, uh, sorry, I take that back. <laughs> <laughs> Mo, your performance tonight, and we're halfway through the season, so on Monday Night Football, we always pick our team of the season so far. So, oh. I'm just letting you know, yeah. you've made it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, I appreciate it. That's the biggest honour. It doesn't get bigger than that, Mo. Congratulations. Nah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you, it means a lot. Thank we, you. we wish you well, of course, for the uh, African Cup of Nations and uh, congratulations tonight. You're leaving Liverpool in a, in a very good state. Thanks for speaking to us. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. Have a good day.
It was, it was really interesting hearing him, him sort of talk about, you know, the team's OK. Without me, it's OK. Someone yeah. else will come yeah, in and do yeah, my yeah, job. Yeah. Do you share his confidence? Uh, listen, I don't know too much. Uh, Oh, was he talking about Egypt? Or was he talking about he was talking like... about when he goes away to oh, play sorry. with Egypt, the, oh, the okay. Liverpool team's going to be OK in his well, absence. Well, listen, I think what we saw tonight was... Listen, we've done analysis on Arsenal tonight in terms of saying, in their attack, they lack him. A world-class one. Now, Liverpool don't have him. Now, they've got in Jota, someone who was a great goal scorer. But you saw with Nunes tonight, and obviously Diaz, who I thought was fantastic, played his best game for a long time. They're not in great form in front of goal and they're not world class in front of goal, uh, I would say. So that will be a problem. It'll be really interesting to see who he puts in that position because a lot of Liverpool's attackers, even a lot of them are right-footed, they, they look OK on the left. So you can play Jotter on the left, Nunes goes to the left, Gakpo goes to the left. No one looks like they've got the right balance for the right now. I think a couple of options could be Harvey Elliott. That left foot, he comes inside, but... I think he's more of a midfield player, probably lacks pace to play in the front three, but he can do it. And also Sobersley. Liverpool have got a lot of midfield sort of options now. Uh, McAllister's back end was going, to be fair. But it could be Sob uh, Sobersley, who's played there for his former club. And you then put another midfield player in. But I think, it's, it, listen, you can't replace his goals. Yeah, I, I think that's very difficult. 34 shots against Manchester United, 34 tonight against Newcastle. Was there a time that you were thinking, oh, this could be going the same way as that kind of game? Because they're having so many moments, no. the ball just wasn't going in. It, the, even though the shots might be the same, this felt completely different to the Manchester United game. There was a pace to this game, there was an energy. Liverpool were getting forward quickly, bodies in the box. And the actual efforts they were having, they were great chances. I don't think Liverpool ever really looked like scoring against Manchester United, being totally honest. You know, it, it, there was lots of efforts there in times where maybe they could have done better, but it didn't feel like they really worked the goalkeeper. I mean, to Brad forget today, but he was... Ten saves he made. Exactly. So, yes, the numbers might be the same, but I can tell you when you look at the XG, Liverpool's XG was... was record was, XG. Record XG record for, XG for Liverpool. Was, well, for any team in, in Premier League history since they started uh, the data, I think, 2010-11. Right, let's get some Newcastle reaction. It's five defeats in six now in the Premier League for Newcastle and we can hear from their manager, Eddie Howe, with Juliet Farrington. Eddie, that was pretty much a roller coaster, wasn't it? Yeah, it was uh, a lot happened, action-packed game. Um, we're disappointed with um, the way we defended for the, especially the last two goals, um, the build-up to them. Um, but I, I didn't think the second one was a penalty um, and I thought Sean Longstaff's one was just before that. Yeah, I asked Martin about some of the decisions, the two penalty decisions. He he obviously, he was watching the ball and, and obviously can't comment on it as much, but for, as a manager, what, what can you say about that? For me, that, that, that shouldn't be given. Um, I think Martin's pulled his hand away. I think he must have had two steps before he's gone down, so for me it's not a penalty. Sean Longstaff's one was um, just before that incident. The first one... Even, even the first one, I can see why it's given, but uh, the contact was so minimal. So, yeah, we feel hard done by on those decisions. Do you feel as well more hard done by because of the position that you're in too? Do you feel things are going against you in terms of what you've had to deal with this season? I think uh, it's difficult to say that. I think you, uh, you have to have the mindset that you've got to create your luck um, yourself, feeling hard, hard done by or feeling negative emotions or... Sorry for yourself, it never has any positive outcome. So, no, we'll look at ourselves as well and what we can improve. It wasn't a perfect performance from us. I thought the lads gave everything. I thought physically we committed to the game. Liverpool played very well. You were dealing with a lot tonight, not just on the pitch, but the conditions, the weather and everything else. Um, how much does that play a part? Because you were saying before the match you had to have play in the most perfect way to get anything from Liverpool, but you can't sort of question that spirit and desire, even though the performance wasn't up to your the level that you were expecting? Yeah, I think the first thing we look for is commitment, effort, desire, um, representing the shirt, the badge, the city. I, I thought the players have done that. E even through this run where we haven't got great results, the, the effort and commitment's been there. And I think, firstly, that has to be our, our standard. Then after that, I, I back the quality of the group. I know in time we will get the results that we need. It's this bad time at the moment, but you, can you see a light at the end of the tunnel, as people would suggest? Well, I can always see a light at the end of the tunnel if the players continue to give me everything that they've got, because I know we've got the quality. Um, a lot of quality wasn't here today, a lot of players that, that weren't available for selection, that makes a difference. Um, but the players that were here did, did give everything, and we know we can do better. 
talking to other players just finally, Kieran Trippier, groin injury, uh, Callum Wilson, I think it's calf injury as well. So the length of time that they won't be available to you? Unclear, yeah. I think, um, yeah, fingers crossed, they won't be long. Thanks for your time, Eddie. Thank you. Five on target, but they couldn't find their way through. They had one obvious uh, attempt, of course. First of all, any question it wasn't a penalty? No, I can see why Newcastle uh, players and fans will probably be, be cross with it. But once Botman goes to ground and you see Anthony Taylor's position, he was always going to give the penalty. And once the penalty was given, it was never going to be overturned. Botman comes across with that right foot there. And you could say that Diaz steps on accidentally, whatever you want to say, but it was a penalty and I had no qualms with it, to be honest. What do you think, Michael? Yeah, I mean, how many times do we see this type of thing? Does the contact warrant him... You know, it doesn't justify him going down, let's say. There's not enough force to take him down, but because there's a touch there, he goes down. Yeah. And, and if he stands on his feet, you simply don't get the penalty. So right. you can see on Luis Diaz's left foot, now there is a touch there. Does that mean his right foot now has to buckle and fall down? Of course not. I mean, he can stand up easily. Um, however, you're not going to get many strikers that will because if you do that, you won't get a penalty. So, call it what you like, but, um, you know, it, it, it's ended up being a penalty because he's gone down and the ref's given it. And Mo Salah has now missed four of his last nine penalties in the Premier League. Credit to Bravka here, absolutely, or...? Absolutely, absolutely. He has to be more cute, doesn't he, Salah? This was, you know, step one of how to take a penalty. Just run it and hit it as hard as you can down the middle. Goalkeeper stayed strong, stayed nerveless, stayed on his feet. It makes a really good save. And then it falls to probably the man you wanted to fall to, to, you know, hit a, a bouncing ball. And he skies it, Trent. And it was just how Liverpool were in the first half. Creatively, in the final third, they were just lacking a little bit. Yeah, I mean, the graphic was shown, wasn't it, before Mo Salah took the penalty? Most of his penalties have gone into that area where the Bradka saved it, so he's done his homework. He had the, the nerve, as Maka says, to actually stand and, and, and wait, and uh, Mo Salah's gone for power. What could have Trent Alexander-Arnold done better on that rebound opportunity oh, for you? Well, the hard thing is you're, you're mm. waiting yeah. what feels like an hey, eternity. It's the patience, isn't it? Yeah. It's, you, you've got to let it drop. The longer you can, you can be brave and let it drop, the, the, the better chance you've got of scoring. But, of course, the ball's coming to him, he's running in, you want to just score, your eyes light up, you get all excited and you take it a little bit too high. And, uh, and as you can quite clearly see there, he's hit it right at the bottom of the ball, nearly missed the ball, actually. Mm. It was uh, a pretty poor miss from him. Now, we had a discussion about Darwin Nunez before the game. He's got one goal since the start of November, that was against Burnley. Should he have scored tonight? Yes, absolutely. And, again, he has to be more cute with his finishing. You can't just... You know, attack everything can be, you know, one-dimensional. You knew exactly what he was going to do here. As soon as he opens his body up, you know, he's almost telling the goalkeeper what he's trying to do. He runs around the ball to get it onto his right foot. And then he has to either go around the goalkeeper by opening his body up. But he puts it exactly where Zabrav thinks he's going to put it. I feel he either has to hit it early with his left foot there, but once he opens his body up, he's telling the goalkeeper, I'm just going to place it around the side of you. Yeah, once he opens up, he could be lovely to see him just drag, drag it, it around alongside him, yeah. here, along, around the goalkeeper to the left and then tap it into an empty net. That would have mm. been nice. I agree with Maka, his, his options is to take it early with your left foot. Uh, he's telling the goalkeeper what he's going to do. You know what, listen, I used to run around the, goal, uh, the ball a little bit. This is an incredible effort. I mean, part of me says, what are you doing? Part of me says it's just unbelievable skill. Well, it is unbelievable skill regardless, but... Can he ever score from there, Maka? I'm sure. Well, your yeah. mate, your mate, Roberto Carlos. Yeah, I saw Roberto think. Carlos score from that side on the opposite side of the pitch, an even better strike from a more acute angle. If you can be more acute than that, the Nazi. But it was it was certainly a shot, wasn't it? Definitely was not across, and he, yeah. he nearly came off. Where in the football world, I'm Derek Ray, joined by Lee Dixon in the commentary position, and very much looking forward to bringing you action from the Premier League. It is Liverpool facing Brighton and Hove Albion. Thanks, Derek. I'm sure both coaches will want their players to start with a real zip in their play. Really show the opposition what they're in for. That could lead to fireworks. Let's hope so. Let's take a look at the Liverpool starting 11. Alisson begins in goal. Andrew Robertson starts with Trent Alexander-Arnold in the fullback positions. Mohamed Salah plays with Sadio Mane out wide. And he's through here. Well, good defending, clattered out of there. 
Ben White. Here's Gross. Oh, getting right in their opponent's faces, forcing that hurried clearance, and a throw it'll be. And he might be through here. In it goes! That will do nicely for starters. First goal of the game. Well, here is the replay, and to be fair, the keeper from that distance hasn't got much chance of keeping it out. Lovely goal. Well, let's have another view of that goal. The opening goal of the game, then. Goal for Liverpool. Number nine, Roberto Firmino. Might be able to get in behind the defence. Mopé, just the challenge that was required. Delightful pass. Mane. And it goes! Two goals in rapid fire fashion and looking very comfortable here. Well, as we see again here, the damage is started with a beauty of a through ball and a 2v1 is never fair. To be honest with you, the keeper's got no chance to stop this. It's lovely football. It's going their way, 2-0. Goal from Liverpool, number 11, Mohamed Salah. Welbeck. Welbeck. And Liverpool come away with it. Mane. Moving into the advanced position. Firmino. Almost his second.